what most people are getting wrong and why we are starting to utilize something like a Nears or Moxie to help distribute or help with our training progressions. Yes, I think taking it way back, I know a lot of people in the fight game, particularly coaches, are going to be familiar with like Joel Jameson's ultimate MMA conditioning. That was huge years back. I read book, it right? Man, I got the book right here for you, man. You know what? This is the throwback book here. Look at that. So <laughs> anyone that's read the book knows you'll start flipping through it and you find a section inevitably that kind of breaks down different energy systems into categories. It tells you if you're... I don't remember the exact details off the top of my head, but if you're working from zero to 10 seconds, it's a lactic anaerobic training. And then 10 seconds to 20 seconds is anaerobic power. And then all of a sudden, when you get past maybe two minutes, then you're doing aerobic training. Mm -hmm. What becomes really jarring to a lot of coaches, you hear this story told by many people across many domains is they put a moxie on and they hop on a bike and they do a sprint and they see oxygen depleting instantly. And a lot of times my first reaction was this device doesn't work because oxygen is not supposed to be used right now. I have a biochemistry background. I was taught this in school. So of course this device doesn't work. Yep. It's not until you actually realize that a lot of the textbooks were written 20, 30 years ago and that we can look at bioenergetics through more of a contemporary lens that we could acknowledge that all these energetic processes that we're familiar with are all still occurring, but that time frame is milliseconds versus seconds to minutes to hours. So the second we start an activity, oxygen is going to be utilized rapidly. And if it's utilized at a greater rate than it's supplied to the tissue, you would see muscle oxygen saturation decreasing. So already this really starts to hijack a lot of coaches' paradigms about how we train athletes, because if oxygen is always utilized and always part of that energy transduction process, and we could even blow it out further and say, lactate is always used as a fuel source as well so now we could say that all training is aerobic and all training is lactic so instead of thinking in these confined terms of i'm doing anaerobic training today or i need to improve my aerobic power instead we could focus on what are the limiting systems in this individual so if i'm working with a mile runner or a fighter i wouldn't say you're limited by your lactic endurance or your anaerobic power I would say you are limited by your cardiovascular system's ability to get oxygenated blood to your working muscle. That's mm -hmm. a more that's a more practical paradigm for me as a coach, because if you're limited by your anaerobic power, what do I do for you? Do I just have you do 20 second sprints every day versus yeah. if I know you're limited by your cardiac output? Well, mm -hmm. that's something I know how to deal with as a coach or a physiologist. So mm -hmm. we could really change our paradigms. And in my opinion, it's been a game changer for me because it's allowed me to really identify and isolate my athletes limiters and then have really practical tools for dealing with those. Yeah, that that allows you to streamline the training process and again, maximize your, your time efficiency.